So we have a question at hand, and we are asked to find the values of a and b if f of x is equal to x cubed plus a x squared plus b x plus three, and then x plus two all squared leaves a remainder of zero. So if x plus two all squared leaves a remainder of zero, it means x plus two all squared is a factor of this polynomial f of x, which is equal to x cubed plus a x squared plus b x plus three. So if this is a factor, this means that if I should expand in our solution, if I should expand x plus two all squared, this is going to give me x plus two and then x plus two. So this is going to give me x squared when we expand, then plus two x plus two x, so plus four x and then plus four, okay? So the expansion of x plus two all squared, which is leaving the remainder of zero, when divided by this, okay, is equal to, we are given x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, remember I told you that for a linear function, we can write it as what? ax plus b. A quadratic function, it will have two terms. So let's say ax plus b and then bx plus c. And then for a cubic function, it will have three different terms, okay? Let's say x plus 1 x minus 5, and then 2x plus 3 or something. So it can be ax plus b, bx plus c, and then ex plus h. So in this case, we are going to assume that there is a third factor, which we don't know. So we are going to assume that let the third factor, let the third factor be, let's say, px plus q, where p and q are... Um, variables we are going to determine them okay so if i should multiply this by this factor which is this quadratic by this third factor it means i'm going to have my complete um factor theorem for a cubic function okay so we shall have x squared plus 4x plus 4 multiplying px plus q so if i should multiply this x squared times px i'll have px cubed x squared times this, I'll have qx squared. 4x times this, I'll have 4px squared. 4x times this, I'll have 4qx. And then 4 times px, I'll have 4px. And then 4 times q, I'll have 4q. So after expanding, I multiply this times this, this times this, 4x times px, uh, 4x times q, 4 times px, and then 4 times q. Now, let's group like terms. If we group like terms, we shall have px cubed plus um, q plus 4p, all with the coefficient of x squared. Then we shall have 4q plus 4p, all with the coefficient of what? x plus 4q, which will be the last term, which is the constant. Now, we have written this in the form x cubed plus the following term is x squared, coefficient of x, and then the constant. Now, when we watch the question, when we watch the cubic function given, we have x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 3. And this can be equivalent to px cubed plus q plus 4p, all with the coefficient of x squared, okay? Then plus 4q plus 4p, coefficient of x, and then plus 4q. Now, if we should compare coefficients, okay? Comparing coefficients. So let's compare coefficients. Comparing coefficients. When we compare coefficients, we realize that we have px cubed and we have 1s cubed, okay? This is 1s cubed. So comparing coefficients, we can say that p is equal to what? 1. Okay? Now, if p equals to 1, the coefficient of x squared is also q plus 4p. So we can also say that, let's name this equation 1. q plus 4p is also equal to, which is the x squared. The coefficient over here is a. This is equal to what? a. Let's call this equation 2. And then we have 4q plus 4p, coefficient of x. So we have 4q plus 4p, which is the coefficient of x. When we watch here, the coefficient is what? B, okay? Then the last one, which is equation 3, we can also say that 4Q is equal to 3, which is a constant. 
4Q is equal to 3. And we could see from here that Q is equal to what? 3 over 4. So we can name this equation 4. Now, when we watch equation 1, 2, 3, and 4, we realize that we even solve for P and Q already. We have the value for P and the value for Q. So if we need to find A and B, let's just set P equals to 1 and Q equals to 3 over 4 into equation 2. So from equation 2, if P equals to 1, we are saying if P equals to 1 and Q is equal to 3 over 4, then we put P equals to 1 and Q equals to 3 over 4 into equation 2. And putting this into equation 2, we shall have Q plus 4P. So 3 over 4 plus 4 and then P is what? 1. It's equal to what? A. Okay? So from equation 2, we are putting this into equation 2. So A will be equal to what? We shall have 3 over 4 plus 4 equals to A. Our uh, A will be equal to, our uh, LCM is 4, so let's find the LCM, 4, we have 3 plus 4, 4, 16, equals to what, A. So A is equal to 19 over 4. Now, if A is equal to 19 over 4, we can also put P equals to 1, and Q equals to 3 over 4 into equation 3 to get the value of B, because B is equal to what, 4Q plus what, 4P. So put in... P equals to 1 and Q equals to 3 over 4. Q equals to 3 over 4 into equation 3. We shall have 4Q and then our Q is what? 3 over 4 plus 4P. Our P is equal to what? 1. This is equal to B. So 4 will cancel 4. We shall have 3 plus 4 is equal to B. So B is equal to 7. So this means that if A is equal to 19 over 4 and B is equal to 7, it means therefore our f of x, okay, our f of x will be equal to x cubed plus our A is what? 19 over 4. So we have 19 over 4 x squared, then plus our B is equal to what? 7. So plus 7x plus 3, which will at the end of the day give us 4x cubed plus 19x squared, plus 4728x, plus 12. We multiply 2 by 4. So our f of x is equal to this. Now, we'll be able to find the values of a and b, okay? Our a is equal to 19 over 4, which answers the first one, and b is equal to 7. And then our function f of x is equal to this. Now, we are asked to find the zeros of f of x. Find the zeros of f of x. Now, because x plus 2 all squared was given to us as a factor. It means if we should divide x cubed plus ax squared, given now that we know a, plus bx plus 3, okay, by this, we shall get a remainder of 0, which shows that it is a factor. So for us to get a third factor, what we are going to do is we are going to divide this by x squared plus 4x plus 4, which is the expansion of x plus 2 all squared, okay? So we shall have x squared plus 4x plus 4. Then we have our division sign. We have 4x cubed plus 19x squared plus 28x plus 12. So we are dividing 4x cubed plus 19x squared plus 28x plus 12 by x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, let's do this division. Now, if this is x squared and this is 4x cubed, what do I multiply with x squared to get 4x cubed? So that will be 4x. So we shall have 4x here. 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 4x times 4 is 16x. So this is going to give us, when we subtract, this will give us 0. 19 minus 16 will give us 3x squared. And then 28 minus 16 will give us um, 28 minus 16 will give us eh, 28 minus 16 is 20 20 plus is 12 x so this will give us 12 x then plus we bring this 12 down now if this is x squared and this is 3 x squared what do I multiply with x squared to get 3 x squared that will be positive 3 so 3 times x squared is 3 x squared 3 times 4 x is 12 x 
and 3 times 4 is what? 12. We subtract, this will give a remainder of what? 0. Okay? So, the zeros of f of x, okay, we shall have this as the third factor. So, the factors of this are, of this expression, 4x cubed plus 19x squared plus 28x plus So, the factors are x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then 4x plus 3, okay? So, if we want the zeros of this, when we factorize this, this will give us x plus 2, all squared, and then 4x plus 3. This is equal to zero. It means we are going to equate to zero to get the um, zeros of f of x. So getting the zeros, we can say either x plus two is equal to zero, x is equal to negative two. That will be twice, okay? So it's the same answer as negative two. Or four x plus three is equal to zero, four x is equal to negative three, x is equal to negative three over four. So therefore, the zeros, of f of x are negative 2 and negative 3 over 4. These are the zeros of f of x. So this brings us to the end of this question. Let's pick another question and try and solve it.